Hello everyone, today we talk about a topic that will surely arise great, you know, sensation. In a way, I already made two videos on the same, already explaining in a you know comprehensive fashion what my position is on, on, on the issue. In fact, uh, that shouldn't be an issue at all, right? Unless uh, someone wants, say, to, uh, to make it. Um, as it happens, unfortunately, every once in a while, and you know, all the things that I discovered uh, by having a YouTube channel is also having, you know, thanks to this statistical um, character of the same, the traffic that I've had and so on, is the average, what I call often popular approach to history, which you could expect from, uh, in fact, a YouTube audience in general. And one thing that strikes me. Of all, like imagine I have I don't know how many, I think I approach one million views at this point. Um, been here for a long time. I've looked at other stuff in my life, you know, in, in historically, um, and on the internet too, and from groups, uh, from pages, etc., forums, right? And so I have enough material to, to compare on statistically these approaches and as far as especially Schwerpunkt is concerned right I have touched on lots of actually very controversial topics I talk about war about politics about current affairs sometimes it, while it's true that I don't take a kind of a too much of an ideological stand uh, and that even when I do I expressly say look this is my view and I think that there is a moral and scientific proof in what I say true in fact my historical work etc um, I never believe me I never get ever basically any form of criticism right uh, and you may find um, you know cr first of all even critical comments are extremely rare you may find someone who has uh, woken up badly one day and just has nothing to say oh, you know um, this thing is not true, and that's it, right? And if and the first thing that strikes me in there is, in fact, the the brevity of such statements. Like you disagree, but basically you don't even explain why, which is another issue that has to do with the same one that we talk about today. It's just the saying, you know, this rejection because I don't know. Uh, I talk about a people, a country, or whatever, and you know somebody from there gets pissed off because doesn't like thing to be discussed. I understand that even emotionally. I I understand where it comes from. I don't think it's a big deal. In fact, it's not. Right? I mostly receive this overwhelming support and whatever. And any of these criticism, in fact, normally is, as you've seen, it's blank. Right? It doesn't even express exactly what position uh, it takes on the historical issue. As I understand as well that you don't want to waste time with you know, you disagree with someone, okay, you won't want to get into uh, an argument or whatever. I usually, at this point, if I think that there is no point, I don't even allow the comment, right? Because the question is, what's the point, even for other people to come on my videos and, and, and reading this person that gets pissed off and doesn't even explain why and, you know, gener sets this kind of negative mood without um, even addressing, of course, even the content of the videos. I hardly ever get a person who says, okay, I, I, I've listened to your um, video from the beginning to the end and I think this and that never right not even the fans let's say <laughs> not even those who normally regularly follow mostly you know enter in in the in medias res we could say and you know express a broader comprehensive logic of that and we and it seems to me and it's a pity because I know there are people out there that yes I confess it there were some very few times somebody come up with okay I have this idea and kind of ex explain it right even in positive or negative terms right and that was cool and always allowed those comments because I think that they do bring um, something to the channel right also in a quite utilitarian uh, way right but even in there you can perceive that it's like one part of the video or you know from, from what they say they haven't listened to the whole point, and they, they, they don't get the general point. You know, I, I know that my videos are very long, and sometimes it's, uh, it's, you know, it's even boring just to listen to them uh, entirely. But 
the way I make them in my mind, as you understand, I use practically no script, and even when I do, uh, I, generally speaking, still envelope the the entire um, content with a some broader, um, comprehensive evaluation of it through the the compass that normally use on the rest of the videos about our historical judgment, right? Which is crucial and it's the sap of history really which is also something that we have kind of forgotten and partly contributes to the problem we're going to discuss today in fact so the impression in general is first of all this one the the general superficiality of historical approach pretty much everywhere right it's not my channel this this is something i see just because i run it and and check what what happens there but again if i log on quora or i you know go on a history uh facebook history group or whatever or, you know it, it happens sometimes i have to check some information on the internet so i stumble on some forums things they say and and you read of course as you would expect some of the most bizarre ideas that are such because basically this is the mental trick, the mechanism. One gets to one point, basically sclerotizes, is, uh, sclerotizes it, hypostasizes it, and says, you know, this is it. So whatever it happens, I have set my mind on this, and it doesn't matter. Like, it, it's not a, a complex thought. It's not a comprehensive understanding. It's not refined. It's not deep. But to me, it's enough. Right? It's a matter of standards. Right? And this is pretty much the same thing that you see at every other level today, moral and scientific alike, right? Let's be honest, everything has dumped down. We, we know now that from decades, IQs have been going down. IQ may not be maybe the best descriptor of intelligence, but, you know, empirically, at least it says something uh, in that sense. And it, it does turn out that, uh, and it overlaps, therefore, with my um, empirical individual experience that yes things are dumping down brutally right uh, it's normal when you get you know to make an exam make a lesson uh, to the kids of the first year of university and they, they come to you to say as you would expect silly things right because it's normal because you know that school sucks that even the same university by a lo uh, great degree sucks that there is really a loss in reference, uh, a loss in uh, hierarchical values, a loss in in objective criteria, um, in and lots of other things that I don't know. Uh, up to a few decades ago, we just gave for granted because that's the, basically the only way we we know scientifically we can understand anything about the world. And today, everything has just morally relaxed to the point that no, it's basically it's too difficult. I don't want to make that extra effort to say. You know, even to sound, to pretend to sound an intelligent person anymore. Not because you have to pretend that, but in fact, it's the, all the more uh, pre presumed. Um, uh, the more you you just use this ever cheaper uh, shield as some form of face, right? At that point. So in this kind of voidness of historical. Uh, uh, criticism in general. Again, as you know, I talk about a, a dramatic variety of political, military, and social issues that are very specifically historiographical, which means that um, they are debated, right? Normally, the videos I make, even on general medieval history, there is an enormous debate. You could say something in the opposite of it by a certain degree, right? I just present them in the way I think and explain why. Uh, and you could make enormous criticism about them all on the base of you know just having read some book on the topic do i ever get this zero like nothing not even a single trace the palest one which again is normal i don't expect a youtube audience to be even into that maybe you all know those things but you don't speak up because this that it's the same thing that i that i did frankly with you know, the few times I followed some channel back in the day. Now, I really don't have time for anything. Um, but, you know, for, from w what I get, again, there is no trace of that. Um, 
this is again interesting because in spite again the the, the, the audience may be general you still count on, on a channel that is heavily historical and exactly because of the variety and complexity of the topics I I deal with independently from how I eventually um, lay them out and you know explain them that's another passage there's however only one topic <laughs> that again I have already discussed and you can find it in the Byzantine history playlist that is the following and I will take the example from a comment that I received and I, I will be an a-hole right and this is the only type of topic in which I like to be an a-hole specifically okay I admit I have a, a, a couple of maybe I'm forever like that but I, I like to provoke sometimes because I believe that without that history would be again that same kind of flat desert uh, and not history in practice that I read I don't say this is the this could be a video response it's more just like taking the you know, inspiration from the kind of comments and I rarely get them too but they're basically the only type of historical reference that I get in my comments well, you would wonder you know you read the title so you know what I'm talking about <laughs> but uh, again if you saw it from my perspective again just from a statistical point of view this is the single only thing of the entire I cover ancient medieval modern history again all countries peoples whatever this is the only single thing that I'm told I will simply read the comment and again so I hope the author is listening doesn't take it so so badly but it's important it's it's really much more important than you may think now this was a comment uh, that of course I did not allow but I'm here to talk about it openly so I'm not really I show you the fairness because I'm not hiding anything in practice I just take away what is useless um, as I'm in charge here first place uh, if the you know the, the the YouTube divinity allows um, so this is under the uh, a Byzantine Italy uh, video I made that years ago that was uh, you know which I I presume I said the, the usual things I say and for some algorithmic reason it keeps being watched right so um, it normally gets some appreciation it says quote Byzantine Italy more like East Roman Italy it's reconquered territory out of the hands of the barbarians and back in the hands of Romans not some foreign entity here to conquer new land great video though so thanks okay so this comment I remember it worse from how I read it but again you immediately see here what's the issue right it's this is not about history per se this is about again here I call it a nominalistic heresy and you know that heresy literally means choice right you simply decided that this is the path you're gonna follow right and it's definitely a nominalistic one because the issue is about the name and it's more than just a name issue it's nominalistic because it makes essentially the essence of the whole thing the name itself so as you know I use the term Byzantine normally to address what was the Roman Empire right I um, in, in my videos I'm, I've always used uh, both terms depending on what side of the story I wanted to stress the most right if I wanted to stress properly the, the Roman identity the Romanity the, the Roman legacy the continuity proper uh, of Constantinople I would use Roman on a regular basis I would stress that if, if I want to oppose let's say the, the more Greek Eastern dimension um, to say the Frankish one and you know the, the Holy Roman Empire and you know that I've also made an increasing amount of videos that I will keep in fact making in this trend that tends to show given that my channel has a for obvious reason a bit more of a more narrowly Western European bias and for reasons that I will explain that it you know at least my regular followers 
understand, and I will try also to clarify better, in relation to Constantinople. I never use the term Byzantium, for example. I use the term Byzantine, but Byzantium I think never used because that I don't like, right? And again, I, I will explain you also why this is a matter of, of uh, really of preference, a personal preference by a certain degree that of course must be substantiated of, with some uh, idea because that was not Byzantium in the first place, while Byzantine is almost an adjective that we use to define the Roman Empire of a specific time, that in fact not having just in a utilitarian fashion to explain all the time, but we're, what we're talking about the Roman Empire is 2,000 uh, years of Roman history, right? So if we understand the term Byzantine, you could say, well, you know, you could use the term, uh, I don't know, the dynastic terms to specify, but it is true that what we call, in fact, as Byzantine was something that you can enucleate as such because it was also something different, something smaller, something shifted, that had changed importantly in some ways. It was Roman, yes, but I think the term Byzantine has always that important semantic depth that is, that by the way, goes even beyond the empire, right? That goes in the history of art notoriously, properly in a particular style and influence, uh, etc. But I'm not discussing that now. The issue here, you see, is that it's the, it's the attitude of the individual, again, not I, I've never heard even just the, the aforementioned, the, 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 the sentences I've just stopped uh, pronouncing ever in a discussion about this topic. Right? I've never met a person who says, you know, let, let's try to, to reason a little bit, even just historiographically, why the term Byzantine came about, why it's still used, by the way, by something called Byzantinistics, that is to say the greatest experts in the world about Byzantine history call themselves Byzantinists zero. All right, that doesn't count. The word does not exist. This is a nominalistic heresy. You have chosen that. It's your new doctrine. It's your new dogma, all right? And uh, you see, when I encountered this, this phenomena, as I saw it, I immediately want to, to study their causes. Like, this is the most interesting thing. I don't even want to lose time, as we'll briefly do now, to completely debunk even just the complete historical mistake that is done here, that is done every single damn time they try to, and they don't know, they're basically falling in the same problem that they're trying to, to solve, and that are just overly uh, increasing for no valid reason. Um, um, I will ex explain this better. So, see, the issue here is, first of all, you come on a channel that makes videos that, as you eventually see, speak for two hours in a row about Byzantine history. You also probably don't know that I have a playlist in which I made, I think, 90 of, of these videos. Um, so basically, I talked for days um, about Byzantine history here. Um, you don't have to know what's my, ba what's my background, because regular followers know uh, where I come from with history, what my titles are, but I never use them to say, okay, you know, I'm this, so whatever I say, it's better, right? But I could tell you that even if you are, the, for those people that um, conceive authority as, uh, you know, a source of, just check a little bit my channel and see where I really come from. Like, if you knew, by the way, where I come from, you probably would understand even more this thing. And just, I don't do it because... It's, there is this battle where I come from that is that is too 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 amazing, in my opinion, because I get the most diverse nationalities, and instead I think it's very very easy to to understand where I come from. Um, in any case, um, you may want to suspect in the range of uh, you know real p possibilities that reality can offer. That maybe somebody who makes a two hours long video about Byzantine history, even with a certain specific cut in this uh, in this instance, it was Italy, it was a specific timeline, whatever. So it's not really just a general. Let's talk about the Byzantines. I, I discovered there's this thing about it. that doesn't 
doesn't it drink you like maybe and say maybe that um, I may not be entirely anew to the notion that uh, the Byzantines were Romans um, there is to say I mean honestly how many people have you met in your life who seriously or ever in general thought that like the Byzantine Empire was called or intended in some way that I don't even know how it works from from their side I should ask it, that was co called Byzantine because I personally with the degree of you know you have no idea of of, of the level of of disgust and contempt towards that that I expressed thoroughly for lack of education at every level of the community in a, in a radical way um, in an appallingly uh, in an appalling fashion and with basically no hope of recovery at this time in history um, you know I would have come across the, the, the bullshit I've come across I've never heard and I've met with thousands of students I've met with coming from the most diverse thing I never heard a single person ever in my entire life thinking that like the the Roman Empire at the time was actually called Byzantine or that people con they are considered themselves Byzantines right never I've heard the worst bullshit you wouldn't imagine even about the same Byzantine Empire but I've never heard a single person thinking that uh, that the Byzantines existed as an identity at the time ever also and to tell you how low the concept is in this regard I think that the average person who, who you know who, would pose itself that problem um, in, in those terms does not exist because th those kind of people don't even venture in history in the first place they don't even come across the Byzantine Empire what, what the hell is that right they just don't know it they it's already something if they know anything about you know their, their country's uh, history uh, in you know primary like primary school fashion uh, it's Renault right it's full of interviews on YouTube of fully grown men not knowing like you know what was the uh, the date of the declaration American Declaration of Independence for example those are people who vote there right interestingly enough they have children they drive cars right these people vote that's a very interesting thing even though uh, uh, a dramatic one right so do you think they, they have an idea of what Byz the Byzantines were they have they, does that enter in their own sphere of knowledge by some, some degree no uh, so in order to also talk about Byzantine history you may want to presume at that point I've read anything about that well I also don't know a single Byzantine history book I can immediately tell you just by randomly my uh, my collection here the di just the digital one just by uh, entering bits or Byzant let's do this way of many books I have about Byzantine history here I don't have the counter but I think it's like 50 something like that right I haven't read them all I vow but you know uh, I uh, at university every time I had uh, a Byzantine history a class that I could choose from the customized personal slash personalized part of the curriculum I would always choose Byzantine history and I have plenty of, of books here too physically uh, around me about it well not in, in a single one of these books especially the manualistic ones once you start with there is no premise that deals with the concept that the Byzantine Empire was in fact Roman now how are these books all titled Byzantine something right which already should ring you another bell in case you're uh, intellectively awake um, and this is just as a premise right 
you know, what, what, what do you expect? Did I, you know, I read this thing and I say, oh my god, really? I didn't know. It, it's called his Roman. Really? Not Byzantine? How's that? Oh my god, really? I didn't know that. Oh my god, I didn't know that. I've never found out. Byzantine is not the name. It's East Roman. Oh my god. Really? You know, I've been making, you know, almost a hundred videos uh, of hours long about Byzantine history. I never found out, damn it. It was East Roman. Can you believe that? That's impressive, you know. Oh, I really should check out better, right? Because I'm so, you know, soaked into this uh, decadentistic prejudice about the Byzantine Empire was evil and sucking and, you know, corrupt and, and everything. Damn it, right? You know, thank you for telling me that. I discovered something that in my, I don't know, how many years I studied Byzantine history to this point, since seriously, at least, well, of course, in school I did too, but let's put it in this way, uh, 11 years, uh, I hadn't found out. It's incredible. Right? I'm mind blown. I, I feel now I, I will improve the world because of this knowledge that I had absolutely no idea of until the day before. It, it's incredible. I'm really amazed. Now, the worst uh, about this all, it's not the attitude like saying, you know, coming up on a, on a content, again, that is two hours, by the way, it's a content that is two hours long. As I was saying before, here there is there is even, the guy says, great video, though. So, I don't believe uh, he just wanted to, to make this effect on me. But it, it, makes it, it makes it even worse. Because, basically, you're acknowledging that I'm talking about <laughs> this topic for, for a long time. You even appreciate what I'm saying. And... I think I surely address in, in that topic, especially about Byzantine Italy, as I've been doing recently, uh, the fact that the, the usual story that the, the people moved from Byzantine territory into the Longobard one because they really, you know, the, because of Byzantine fiscalism um, and oppression that, again, was pretty much standard in a sense, but still local communities uh, wanted to move from there because of this reason it was all a struggle and a leader it, it's a big it's, it's a huge it's micro a microscopical historiographical topic right so i i discussed there what it means to be not much what it means to be byzantine that in fact was not on the table at the time but also the issue of romanity there the issue of local identity italy was the 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 heartland of the roman empire it's where the freaking rome stands um so if if there such phenomena were occurring i would ask myself pose myself some question there about what was actually going on. Well, not, of none of this, of course, the comment uh, makes, uh, seems, to, seems to be aware. Right, where were you? So this immediately tells me, first of all, you haven't listened to the video. Because I also may speak uh, a broken English, but I, I think I delivered the concept. So um, I guess that if you get the broader point of the video, you it's pretty strange that kind of you agree with something that I'm actually even countering the same video by providing with some information that you consider to be great in that sense. Uh, so again, indicator that something didn't work exactly well. But the worst of this all, and here there is a tribal worst that we will see because it doesn't end, but the worst perhaps in, in relative terms, and that's something that always pisses me off like like crazy. It's when they say, you say, this was not the Byzantine Empire, it was the East Roman Empire. I mean, if, you know, these are things that are written in the first pages of any Byzantine history manual. There was no such thing ever in the entire Roman history, like an East or West Roman Empire. Those were administrative divisions, it simply meant, you know, the Romans are in charge, there is a single Roman Empire because the Imperium cannot be divided, it's only one, it's the celestial glory provided faculty of command and you basically, like everybody who has studied Byzantine history has dealt with you know, what was the official name of the Empire, right, easily and you know that there were ways of calling it also in different times that 
uh, change, in fact, over time, depending on the, the various changes that occurred within the, the same empire, it was still Roman, but still even just nominalistically speaking was called in different ways. And notoriously, this is an asinine mistake, there was never anything remotely called as Eastern Romans or Eastern Roman Empire. I mean, are you crazy? Basic, basically, by, by saying this, you're butchering the ecumenic nature of the empire that is the, the primary identity of the empire in the first place. This is not only worse, but it, it, it's making it even worse for your point, because basically in order to... because what's the alternative? You see, the problem you have here, if you truly cared about the Byzantine Empire in that sense, which I also do, is you call them Romans, because there is no other thing but the Romanity of the Empire. There can't be any other empire but the Roman one, obviously. This is a concept that the same Western, I mean, the same reason why uh, everybody called eventually like that, right? The Ottoman sultans, the, in fact, the, the, the Germanic emperors that became Roman in Ottonian times, right? This is a, a macroscopical issue in, properly in, in the entire uh, military and religious history of mankind. You... Don't, you stripe that away by even trying to pretend that Byzantine is something so terrible that just it's obviously um, a conventional term that, however, is quite handy exactly to to avoid this 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 abortions like the one you're pretending here. Um, to do what? You're the squishy one. You're the one that has to even fabricate a name that never existed in an official titling. If somebody had, you had called an East Roman to someone living, you know, in Justinian's empire, they would have spit you in the face. Um, just f because it's it's utterly disgusting. You're offending the sacred, right? You cannot afford to do that, right? And of course, from a standpoint like in 2022, where you know the entire culture is simply falling apart where if this were if you really care about history in general and about this kind of things you would find many other reasons for which in my videos it should be something to criticize this is the this is not even about my videos this is about the problem again the nominalistic heresy and dogma that you have sculpted in your mind for reasons that we'll try to inquire now in a psychoanalytical fashion because that's very interesting also historically wise in that you are uh, making just worse and worse. There was never any Eastern Roman Empire, right? They were just to administer the divisions of the single and undividable Roman Empire that, by the way, especially, you know, you can use the, ter uh, you can use the term Eastern and Western Roman Empire to conventionally, as we use the term Byzantine and lots of other conventional terms, to say, okay, well, there was a time in which, you know, it were two courts, uh, the commands were separated, all these kind of things, practically from an administrative point of view, whatever. So at that point, yes, you can't talk about Honorius and Arcadius, the two halves of the empire, the Eastern and the Western Roman Empire, but it's uh, not going to be because there ever was something like an Eastern Roman identity or a Western Roman identity. Those were Romans. Point. End of the story. How do you even dare to, you know, mistake... A uh, historiographical convention w for a nominalistic um, issue that you even can't distinguish when you, you know, go check what, what even the official titling of the empire was. But even worse than this, and that shows you the entire hypocrisy and cultural poverty of these mentalities that are, again, simply simply selling this shit because they, I don't know what's the point of that. It, it's, it's a serious problem, right? The thing is, even worse, you know, Byzantine Italy, more like Eastern Roman Italy, it's a reconquered territory out of the hands of the barbarians and back in the hands of, the, of, of Romans. Now, this is also a terrifying historical mistake, right, of the worst kind. First of all, you're calling barbarians peoples that had, just like the Romans, their dignity in their own identity that was also founded on the universal ecumenical uh, pride of their own power. Um, those were not barbarians. Those were the gods, right? Um, and they were also a people that had been ruling over Italy in the best, I made a video about this, in the, in the best 
example of coexistence and integration between Romans and Germans in history on behalf of Constantinople, that is to say of the Romans, practically. Right? And this is just the the starting pack of anything because you would, could dig over dig in what was the actual Roman identity uh, felt like in some areas of the empire, uh, the differences between, in fact, the, the Latin world, the Greek world, and other worlds, and what was the same Germanic identity at the time, how the Romans were engineering part of it, and how there were other clanic um, you know, identities. Think about the Amali, etc. So this is yet the mildly kind of starting kind of of advanced side of the story, but let's not even talk about that. So, uh, out of the hands of barbarians, yes, hands of barbarians that actually were sharing the Ravenate consistorium with the Roman senators, right? And Theodoric, the first thing he does when he kills Odoacer is to go to Rome, uh, even as an Arian, to honor the Roman Pope, right? And while in Italy a process of integration of the gods and the Romans was taking place in some form and the, the main issue was not ethnic or religious but political for the control of, of the estates etc to bring eventually to the um, Constantinopolitan intervention there um, it's not uh, here I don't even it, it can't be used you can't use the term Eastern Roman because again it ne was never called like that as an empire or there was never such an identity of Eastern Romanity as yet, yet another invented label at the same level of Byzantine that you're using, but especially even the imperial insignia of the West had been rendered back, as you know, famously enough, in 476 by Odoacer, right? When there were, by the way, still some success, Roman governorates in part with, you know, think about Nepos um, on the Danube, um, the same Siagers in Gaul, even some Moorish, um, Moorish power in North Africa that was still formally Roman. Let, let's keep that, right? Because again, that's not the point. But let's focus on the point, right? So um, you are you're here basically um, butchering any kind, any possible kind of what the, of the same pride and identity. And belief, because this was a matter of faith and of sacredness. Romanity and Catholicism went in power. Now, I would have liked to ask Julius Caesar about that, right? Or even about, I don't know, uh, Scipio Africanus about Caesar and see there what kind of allegiance or identities it would have done, right? Those Romans would have never felt that this, this was the Roman Empire, right? Um, in a. Um, this is not even just to address religious uh, history and generally speaking history of human thought and the development of civilization right so again um, why does this continue right why do people even feel the need to try right not some foreign entity here to conquer new land well this is also interesting as a concept because I've made several videos at this point explaining in some by some degree of detail and no person makes videos about this topic on YouTube because of course nobody knows a shit about that so I, I'm not here to clickbait um, I'm here to explain to teach history right? it's just another thing um, of course what the issue was with the long burst w what is disturbing about this view of course it's very um, uh, say it's not properly Romanocentric, but ironically enough, it's Byzantinocentric, right? Because first of all, Romans, as you know, kept living in Romano-Germanic kingdoms. It was a specific juridical identity that was preserved for a long time, right? Um, it went diluted, also because even at least, and so there was not even a, an usurpation of that ever at a point. It was not a formal moment in which any, I don't know, Germanic king said, you know, from there on there are no Romans in my king. First of all, it was impossible, right? It, it never happened. Identities, identities changed, but no foreign entity. Hmm. Now, this is quite interesting. Do you think that the 
uh, Italo-Roman aristocracy felt the same, uh, had the same values practically, or felt, you know, broadly for I don't know the Constantinopolis and what, you know, you know what the Roman Senate was made up of, even still in Ostrogothic times, uh, very lively so, and the what the Constantinopolitan want was really, I made videos about that. Um, the same fall of the West, um, so we can want to call, that is also kind of misleading as a concept, again, because the Imperium lives on in, in many ways, not just in the Eastern sense, that again, did not exist, but in a much broader one, also because, in fact, as we were talking here, Justinian reconquered those lands. Yes, but who were th these people that reconquered those lands? They were foreigners in many cases. And I can assure you that people who lived in Italy didn't give a shit by far that these were calling themselves Romans. Right? Um, as actually many people in the Balkans didn't give a shit about that. Right? Including the Slavs that started migrating in mass there and simply uh, uh, from an osmotical point of view eventually came to be Romans, but identities were quite mixed in a sense, even in the sense of Romans wanting to be something else. The question is, have you ever studied Longobard history? Why did you come to watch Byzantine Italy uh, videos? Why didn't you go watch Longobard Italy playlists? You would say, well, just randomly. Randomly? Well, I don't think so, because if you come here and say, you know, these were Romans, and we're all Romans and happy, and we're just reconquering these lands from terrible barbarians, I doubt that, uh, you know, the historical prejudice that uh, could easily be paralleled to the, the negative, um, putrescent, decadentistic one of, of Byzantium um, cannot be extended in the sense also to the Germans, right, to these peoples, and especially to to their subjects that were the overwhelming majority of the population and without which the Germans didn't have any chance to rule anywhere um, with millions of people um, that were, by the way, controlling some of the most dramatically advanced areas in Europe at the time um, and that instead chose to be, in fact, something else, right? They, the, this subject choosing to side with the Germans and also to become Germans uh, there is the enormous, terrifying prejudice that I made, especially against the Longobards, right? For most people, Roman history also kind of ends with, okay, Justinian reconquers Italy, then there is the, the Longobards arrive, that's the pile of trash on, on the disaster that the Gothic War, because of Byzantine incompetence, by the way, um, came to be. And so it's the end, bad, you know, Middle Ages start, stop closing the history book, that's it. Right. Um, if I say that, uh, I don't know, Longobard Italy was the most civilly advanced country in Western Europe during the early Middle Ages, that it was a centralized system, that justice worked, it was a functional elective monarchy. Do you, have you ever heard of that by chance? No, because the Longobards are bloodthirsty barbarian motherfuckers and they were just all divided. For no reason, even though there is no historical evidence to, to assume that, because the story of the of the Dutch is, is is all bullshit, and you know at this point historiographically debunked, because it was modeled by an ethnonationalistic view of the 19th century. In fact, that had just analyzed the, the very beginning of Longobard Kingdom and the very end, right? So, missing 150 years in between of functional history that um, nobody cares about. Uh, and the people fortunately tell me, some some of them come and say, you know what, I, I listened to your Longobard history videos and I changed my mind about the Longobards. I didn't know this, thank you, because I really thought there were just, it was this negative stereotype, I recognized it, and this is not true. Thank you. The same thing I would appreciate very much if from my Byzantine history videos, uh, 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 people told me, look, well, you know, you know, I, I love... Um, uh, you know, I, I thought the Byzantines were decadent and all this stuff. Instead, I watch your videos. You know, I, I really had uh, another view. I've never, but for any other topic, by the way, n never heard much of that, right? Even hinging the general prejudices up, uh, against the Middle Ages is very difficult. As for Byzantine history, as for any other history, I treat them with essentially the same degree um, of evaluation. The only difference being that 
I have spotted this in, in popular culture and also because of these comments and a, a dramatic um, pro Byzantine and basically versus anything else that was out there also very often in a in a um, disgusting um, inferiorization of, of the Latin Germanic world to which we owe frankly the overwhelming amount of what since the Middle Ages Western civilization was was cemented on um, with great effectiveness and the problem again being still the dark prejudices about the Middle Ages in general that the splendor of Byzantium doesn't really seem to even just per se explain as a, as a for, for the exception of the, of the alleged exception of the same um, I mean the Byzantine Empire was not really a better place to live normally than say especially by high medieval standards than Western Europe right um, this is not to say that you know there was a dramatic difference because I'm also against this kind of structuralistic interpretations but let's say if you look at the political balance and how the oligarchy had taken over everything well actually and again the the high medieval Europe was different it is something normally you wouldn't think because you think no there's just feudalism it's bad it's just serves you know work in the field and nothing else well have you ever studied the communes have you studied the, the enormous issues um, of um, feudal powers to hold things together in the first place and how they improved and they stabilized and they improved also the general situation such that you know the medieval civilization of revival was also thanks to or, or largely thanks to feudalism these are all issues that again come naturally in in a critical perspective of the story and that again nobody ever made in or any reference to in, in my uh, in my videos so it may be that I have to stress the fact yes that somebody come to that that uh, for example when you speak about foreign entity well by by the time of the Gothic War, yes, the Byzantine Empire was a foreign entity to lands like Italy, to lands like Spain, to lands like Africa. Right? It was a general understanding that the Roman Empire, as a general power uh, that dominated ecumenically and traditionally the world, those lands uh, fit under the, the same under the same imperium. Right? And this is also, in fact, the actual identity we should think of. Here we're not thinking about people of one color, right? Because of one specific language or one specific identity or whatever. You may know this, but what is usually not known is that this identity was not shared in the kind of homogen, homogen heavily homogenized and engineered one that we may have today regarding our national identity. Where there is a state that has taken over everything Right, and that is an absolute power, and that has homogenized and standardized everything for which we are all the same within it in identitary terms. The Roman Empire was essentially a feudal system. That is yet another thing that you don't often hear because we've been fed with the democratic slash republican bullshit, progressive, modernistic, secularistic side of the story that has nothing to do with any historical reality, not even the, the democratic or republican one, unfortunately so of more modern times because the Romans were many different people that were participating to the Imperium in the Roman identity right we're being elevated in this sense and actually what happens in what we start calling like the Byzantine era is that these people do not actually partake to that anymore there's not any more a munus that is a duty and a a reward for a civic participation is also essentially a military one to the purpose of the imperium at least but these people are becoming Romans again in that flattened subject and fundamentally important way that you see as in the dramatic crystallization of what we call in fact for a reason Byzantine society because we want to distinguish it approximately from another time where things work quite differently and there are you know, if you have studied Byzantine history you, from the most updated historiography, this is yet another massive acknowledgement. It's not really somebody's opinion. It's not that you say, okay, these were still Romans, that, okay, you make a sound historical point, because, again, you're not making it 
you know, you're not trying to restore the historical complexity of it. You're reducing this whole thing to an ever cheaper, flat and homogeneous standardized concept that doesn't actually fit the reality of the time or any time for that matter. Because as I was saying before, was this Roman? For what Roman meant in the 4th century BC? Are we kidding? Right, this is not my opinion, this is the opinion of those 4th century BC Romans that having, having seen what power, religion, not just because of Christianity, but properly the attitude towards the sacred, the individual action, how the Imperium was received, said, this is not, absolutely not Roman, it has nothing to do with that, we're not that, it's, uh, it's a, you know, monstrous deprivation, but they, they would have said that about Caesar's time as well as Caesar would have said it of Hadrian's time, right? Was that Romanity? Um, so, again, this is not a matter of personal opinion, right? Let's, if we want to be objective about anything, let's stop pretending that people's opinions are valid subjectively because it's a, you know, it's a contradiction in terms. We are struggling to understand how it, it really was. Then, of course, it was a Romanity there, um, given that we're talking about Byzantine Italy, this could be extended to the Balkans as well, or any other place that the Byzantines ruled fundamentally, some exceptions. Um, perhaps chiefly Asia Minor, that is a crucial one, though. Um, where, and even there, there are exceptions. Think about these Aurians historically, at some point, etc. But uh, notoriously, if you study Byzantine Italy, which, you know, in that video I said something about in these terms, you perfectly know that the divide that existed between the Longobard uh, and the Byzantine world was not, say, you know, you have a, a Roman flat and, and homogeneous reality, then these freaking barbarians arrive and steal the land to the, to the Romans. You have essentially something much more complex. Not only you have the Byzantine reality essentially sticking to the urban coastal centers, where still some Greek was spoken normally next to Latin um, uh, since uh, ancient times because of Hellenic colonization. And, and that's still like in other areas like the Bosphorus or in southern Gaul, etc. Didn't actually go much further in, in inland, right? It was just a few tens of miles. Um, and for the rest, the identities of people living in the interland were different. And that's the reason why the, the Italic majority was Longobard, not because the Longobards were oppressors who came to rule a land one versus 99 uh, or three versus 97 which is the demographic ratio that would give it to the Longobard uh, at the moment of the you know, ethnic divide the moment of the Longobard invasion and the Longobards were also some of the largest actually possibly the largest um, migration era group on the move so just to make you understand also who are we talking about in terms of who were the Longobards, just even a couple of, of generations after the invasion. And it was the, in fact, the Italic, Latin-speaking country that was also the overwhelming majority of the population, no comparison with the Byzantine one, in this sense, and that um, was immediately, let's say, and would remain Longobard in intention, right, and explaining why. Because those people were what you call Romans, right? So in order to uh, avoid misinterpretations, miscalculations, etc., you cannot make a, a, a sound historical point by saying, you know, this were not some foreign entity here to conquer new land. It was just uh, reconquered territory out of the hands of the barbarians and back in the hands of the Romans. Well, why don't you ask the people that actually lived there? I study what happened. I study the correspondence between the Byzantine emperors and Gregory the Great, for example, regarding the long parts of what was happening in Italy at the time. That would be quite interesting. And also studying the, con the Roman contribution to the Longobard kingdom that was, incidentally, the most Germanic um, institutionally of all the Romano-Germanic kingdoms, but also the most Roman ethnically and linguistically, which is, and, and that came to be eventually the pillar, as you know, of the political and institutional mechanism of the Holy Roman Empire since Carolingian times, because Carolingians 
had an enormous respect towards the Longbirds in that regard, and towards also the properly the, the Roman legacy that was still living there administratively, um, etc. These are sensible topics that you could discuss on for hours and hours and hours and hours. If we are still at the point Byzantine, no, East Roman, while East Roman notoriously was not even a, a, an official titling of anything in history, why, you know, why even, why even talking? Again, I, I'm sounding like an a-hole. I, I honestly hope that the person who commented this will even compliment me for, for the content. Um, doesn't doesn't listen to it but uh, i think it's it, it's important to speak up right if you you think it's important to speak up for saying this i i show you what is important to speak up for me right so i think it's fair and this is not i know there are for example there are beautiful channels about byzantine history who uh some called themselves simply byzantine history and they love the byzantine empire and they perfectly knew that the byzantines were romans and they often say it they always say it actually Right, that's the same thing I do. Um, then there are others to say, you know, let's try. There is a beautiful channel, for example, it's called Eastern Roman History. I, I don't know. Um, I never actually watched it, but it seems like to be that kind of content people follow. They like that. They chose Eastern Roman History. Maybe they listen to to this video of mine. I don't think so. Uh, I don't want to flatter myself too much, but they 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 hate. They'll hate me for it. But I don't hate them for them. You know why? Because I don't know, maybe they, I even disagree with them, maybe they, f they make the same point, this was East Rome, which never existed, actually, and that would have been an insult to Roman identity at the time, but what's Easter Rome? How could even even conceive of something like that? But maybe, right, that channel still makes a lot of good historical content, tells a lot of other important things, and so for me, in my moral and scientific balance, I say, well, okay, disagree with, with you, but as long as you keep talking about history and saying sensible things, you're doing something positive. And so I, I accept you, even if you use, if you, if you make a mistake. Again, I could have some, some curriculum to define uh, what is correct or not, historically speaking. I earned that, but I'm not saying that. Um, because it, otherwise it would sound as if, again, it's a matter of authority. No, it's a matter of, of argumentation, which is what I'm doing here and trying to make a sensible point, right? Then there is no doubt this was Roman land that the empire had to reconquer in the first place. Why? Because the, the empire was ecumenic, so there was no alternative, especially Rome itself, right? And it's not, even if you know the history of Byzantine Italy, that Byzantine emperors did give a, a damn about the city of Rome per se. Right, they, they, were, they were just uh, you know something that they had to unlock by reconquering as a as an objective, right, as a bonus. But then they would loot the freaking city. They wouldn't. They would go send uh, the exarchs of Ravenna killing popes or deporting them in chains to Constantinople, etc. Well, which is not exactly you know it just it tells you what dramatic and radical difference it existed just in in the Christian identity of the Roman Empire was crucial. Uh, for Romanity in the first place. But I've made plenty of videos on this topic, so I guess I don't have to repeat myself. Now, um, the, the question of why does this happen? Why this nominalistic heresy has spread? So, first of all, as I was saying in the beginning of the video, it, my impression is that everything is cheapening dramatically everywhere. Right? I see... As I said before, I don't watch other channels, but let's say my channel is not dramatically successful as you can see yet. Um, because I also believe in the Imperium, and so I know that by this doctrine of eternal struggle and victory, I will, uh, I will take over the world. Um, but um, thumbnails, that, those ones you see, right? Also, because if you click on one of my videos, mostly you will be suggested uh, another of those channels that make billions okay not billions but say millions of views um, with content that sometimes is, is good right at least if they take there are documentaries the last for I'm talking about I mean you 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 know them better than me because you you watch them surely better and more than my channel um, 
but and they are sometimes very good content but some other times and this other kind of more medium sized channels that have some you know following um and also the initial ones usually normally it happens this way they they, they buy you um with animations right they say you you click on videos named as uh persian horse are sassanid and orch are uh, horse archers let's say you click on it i dare to do it and you have oh wow there is this first um scene made by some drawers that basically take uh, some copyrighted material which i'm dramatically avoiding to use as you know instead they use it they they put put it together with some kind of animation overlapping with various figures looking cool in the first intro of 10 20 seconds everybody's saying wow oh my god this is this figure then it starts the documentary that uses other images that has nothing to do with it. I, mean, I don't know maybe a documentary of modern mongols riding horses like this kind of things right you know and um and they buy you with poses with this uh oh, this passivity in front of the historical knowledge right i'm here annoying you with my rants but probably also attracting some degree of attention exactly because of you know the the problem i pose with historical interpretation i know it's not entertainment in fact my channel is not meant it's never meant to be entertaining not at least in the sense that it's commonly like becoming the show now history is not a show history is a serious thing right um people do confuse it with movies with video games and i think a great part of the reason why the byzantine nominalistic heresy has spread is that the average kid that comes has played some video games i don't know mountain blade medieval 2 total war mods um or simply watch them on youtube and started you know i, I know because um th there are lots of people watching that notoriously right and the only historical interest very often does pour through that thing and there are some um some important distortions that are occurring this may be one right it's not that i hear everywhere that um uh, you know they weren't byzantines they were romans but this sense that constantinople that eastern roman empire which is disgustingly becoming the official name that it's again has no place in the romanity of the empire were cool because you just watched kind of a purple uh textured um you know uh, you know skeleton uh, in a video game that is supposed to be a byzantine thing hyper pumped up with some cool eastern armor etc is uh, it's not what it means to have any competence or understanding not just about Byzantine history but about anything historical right it's very easy to also clickbait sometimes here you realize that the more like from my videos that the, the more kind of civil kind of deeper also some <laughs> bit more theoretical content people don't watch they want to see swords and guys uh, you know beating each other but that's we know neurocognitively that's like w what your standard list default set instinctively then we built civilization at some point with something called reason criticism uh intolerance because we have to set standards to make things work for real where's this now again there are good channels are out there historically wise but it's just i don't watch them and i have this presentiment that i'll bite the content may be very good it may not be designed to debunk exactly the type of misconceptions that i find instead to be crucial and also very interesting by the way per se like about this topic do you know the history of, of the byzantine term how it came about historiographically because you see if you've just an iconoclast who says no byzantine must be cancelled it's just like banning the N word or any other word, right? It's just stupid because people will find other ways to say the same thing and not do anything to change the problem, right? It's like, um, you know, it's just this is sclerotizing the, um, the monofactual explanation about anything, right? Not the complexity of the system to sort out in more on scientific ways. No, it's, you know, it's this thing point. Let's take away this thing or let's keep pretending that we're taking away this thing until it's not over it's like politics right what's the next enemy 
the enemy is like another utopia. Okay, so I will remain in charge until the utopia is is uh, is taken away. But the utopia does not exist. Doesn't matter. It's the other people's fault if if I don't succeed. Not because I'm running after chimeras, right? This is kind of mindset that is beginning, right? So it's very seducing to say, I I I want to be in the shoes because I see the young kids at university that make questions and ask things like. Again, the most stupid things you can imagine. Um, and at least, however, they're there to learn. And you have the opportunity to, to, to explain it to them. And some of them probably come from a background that is zero. Like up to a few, a couple of generations ago, a, a fully mature individual was a person who had something called a minimal education. Education today fundamentally doesn't exist anymore. It's just some sort of... Col collectivistic herding of people with, on, on the premise that the most important thing is socializing for some reason as if you know people couldn't socialize by themselves which is useful right to bring kids together to, to teach them also what it means to be with others but fundamentally not caring about really making them really more educated for real first of all because teachers are disgusting secondly themselves because they were grown up in the same ways and they are terribly ignorant, by the way. They don't have that comprehensive skill or capacity because we are scientifically getting from top to bottom in the spectrum completely hyper-specialized to the point that we completely forget any degree of applicabil positive applicability of things we specialize in so that you can't create the perfect uh, extremist who is isolated in a bubble and that doesn't, right, uh, uh, maybe just knows everything about the thing but is absolutely unaware of the rest so you can't even do anything with that knowledge like who does read history articles that we write in the academy today right who, who are those things written for for other historians that will be living when when people will have completely lost any notion of history it's already happening do you think that the new generations will literally know anything about anything literally uh, you may think uh, I'm a religious nut, but to say, do you think that next generation, if you tell them Adam and Eve, even just from an anthropological meaning point of view, they will have any context to, to give those figures any meaning. This is by far the single most dramatic civilizational collapse that we have witnessed in the history of mankind. We are perfectly aware of it. Nobody's doing anything to stop it. Or maybe there is some way, but we have gotten to the point where also those who are countering this thing are basically the same. Speaking from a conservative standpoint, I absolutely don't think that conservative people on average are minimally intelligent. Just like leftists, like liberals in general. I don't think so. There is no proof. Show it to me. Like I talk to many people and they, they all fall short of the, those aspects. The question is why? It, it's self-evident. So, um, you see, the Eastern Romans, if, if you say East Romans, you say, you know, I'm not that imbecile who says it's Byzantine history, because I know, right, it's the only thing I know. I've never opened a Byzantine history book or studied anything about it or trying to explain or know better. But I know that there were East Romans, not Byzantines. Well, sorry for you, there was no East Rome. Ever. Right? As there was no Byzantine anything. Ever. Right? If you're making it a nominalistic point. If you want to talk about history seriously, I would like you to explain me, if anything, how, for example, the Byzantine term came about. Why it emerged historiographically, what it was meant to, to be, how it's actually used instead in today's academy, what has been written about it so far, why we'll, we still keep using the term Byzantine, why it's important to, to use it in not just in an utilitarian way, but also to stress, you know, some some depth of the again the, the cultural semantics of of, of Rome, of uh, the Rome of the time, of what they that there were also here different terms. Don't think that in Byzantine history was a sclerotized again definition. The the way they called themselves kind of changed formally, right? Many times, even though the humanity of it was still there. Um, that would be interesting to hear. Do you have an idea? I don't think so. Right? Because all the time I make this point again, you say it's Roman, I say you haven't even read the first page of your Byzantine history manual. 
never made Byzantine history classes so far, but I made about medieval history. And if I, at the exams, I find kids who say, no, no, I, I don't know why, okay, I'd never really ask that question either on an exam, but we are more or less at the same level. If you want, if you want to really to, to show up, you should know those things. Um, this, this attitude, again, is like saying it's, um, uh, it's a collectivistic delusion. It's a typical collectivistic delusion. You find both in nationalism and in socialism, they're both anti-traditional um, perversions of, you know, in fact, of real tradition, not the one that people usually think tradition is today. For which, if I say East Roman, I feel myself better about it. I feel as if I was, you know, this term gives me, I don't know, the, I feel it myself. If I think about East Roman, I see, yes, semantically it sounds kind of a bit more, uh, you know, intense, right, than say Byzantine. Uh, but it's wrong. So again, if you, if it, the problem is the term, you, you could use, use East Roman instead of Byzantine conventionally, maybe because it approaches to the term Roman at least. That may be the only progress, but they weren't called like that either. And I would like also to ask you a question. If you are an English uh, speaker in the first place, do you, how do you, why do you call the Germans the Germans? And not the Deutsche, let's say. Or, or why don't you use the... Why do you call the Hungarians Hungarians and not the Magyars, let's say? Or any other term. Like, are you doing the same charade for for any term you use? Uh, any identity, any name? Because it would be dramatic. I, I don't know any language in the world that doesn't make the, these tricks and, you know, um, and linguistic changes when terming peoples and other... Because conventionally, we came just to call things how we call things and you can't truly really engineer language uh, just on the pretension that picking one single exception to a rule for which you don't give a fuck about any of that on a regular basis uh, in fact you um, you can make the difference it just sounds ridiculous right so I don't really know it's let's just hear the term barbarians just imagine if the gods had called themselves like that, and I don't think they would have liked that, right? Um, and it's pretty silly in general, also because the term barbarian, aside from the linguistic origin and also the different semantics that it had in, uh, in historical times, because the classical Greeks had an idea of barbarians, uh, the, the Romans had an, another idea of barbarians, the Byzantines, what we call in fact to distinguish also these things from the previous Romans, had yet another idea of barbarians. And I'll tell you more that you probably don't know that the Ostrogoths also called barbarians or an equivalent of it, those peoples that in the universal language were considered to be ruled by the celestial uh, stock, right, of, of the invaders had taken over Europe and that were considered to be inferior for that matter just like the Romans, though, in a sense, of the others, but still, again, every people had their own particular background for which they would be influenced, etc., etc., and we should dig into that. Right, so, um, you see, this comment was so eloquent because it, it fell completely in the, in the same nominalistic issue for which, and remember that extremists eventually are take, always taken out by other, by other extremists, also lesser extremists at some point, because extremists at some point are to be taken out. So here, the mistake. No, it's not Byzantine, it's, it's Roman. So you later you say, the hands of the Romans, so you imply that East Roman and Romans is the same thing, wrong. Plus, those other peoples are barbarians. Ah, congratulations, you have really great historical sensitivity for those uh, what are, you know, those, right, just uh, lesser than the Romans, they're lesser human beings, what's your, what are your standards, why don't you declare, why don't you write a constitution, what, you know, of who does, um, of the, explain the criterion, who deserves to be called the original name, but not, and so, um, and about the foreign character of dominations, well, again, I think even if you study Byzantine Italy, that's 
possibly one of the best examples to, to explain that, yes, romance could be very often foreigners to, to one another. It's, it's, it's basically also the, the entire history of the Roman Empire by a certain degree. The tension between the provinces, the competition of the elites, ever since the time of the citizenship, citizenship extension, and more. Right. So the, the attitude is the following. Yes, I belong to the club that s since has watched, you know, YouTube videos b and played video games, thinks that, uh, you know, East Roman is, uh, makes me more special in front of, of the world than, saying Byzantine. Why? I don't know. How the Byzantine term came about was still used, I don't care. Also by the top specialists of, in Byzantine history, I don't care. But I will go around roaming YouTube, uh, randomly checking channels that you don't even check whether they have even talked about Byzantine history, or even in this case, when you see they do and they have something to say, maybe you, you may think they have considered the problem of Byzantine and, 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 and Roman. And for further explanation, in fact, I have, I don't remember how, I think I, I made once a video that is called Byzantine term or like a symbological trap. The term is symbological trap. I don't remember before. Another one on again on the concept of Byzantine something. This is the third video and I decided that I will make a new video. Probably will not repeat myself too much. Every time I get answers like this because I want to spread the concept as well. And to to like, is there something that I want to give to the other side? Like, regarding, for example, the restitution of proper names, uh, the identity of the time, uh, to at least historical language and language in general at this point. Well, I personally have nothing against that, right? If Byzantines were normally called Romans, I would call them Romans probably myself, because that would have been a convention. The problem, as I was saying before, is that... Um, we, um, like, Roman history is huge and hugely impacting, basically, at any world civilizational level, right? If you want to study history, you can't avoid to confrontate yourself with it, um, even if you study the history of Oceania, because still, wherever you come from, you have to, you live in a world that is dominated by Western culture. So, Western culture overwhelmingly owes a lot among the others to, to Rome and in ways that are quite unique within within the setting. So it, it's crucial in a sense to to be fully aware of that as much as it's it's um, it's important to be fully aware of, of everyone, right? You know that I make many videos about many different peoples, I like places, provinces, identities. I, I take I, I care very much about that, honestly. I think it's a very interesting topic. So, yes, I am generally for for spreading the concept of why the Byzantines were Romans, and I there is no way to deny it. There's no point, right? It, it's what you def by default know if you know anything about Byzantine history. But I also want people to know why the term Byzantine is used before getting rid of it, right? And not making an iconoclastic, cheap involution. Right, that doesn't add anything positive or, or constructive to the historical debate. The historical debate that, again, in the academies is done still with the term Byzantine as absolutely f used. Right? You will always find some kind of nominalism here and there. I remember once somebody said, ah, you know, since you use the term feudal, I guess that you don't you know very few about medieval history. Well, this kind of things, you know, you know, you have to be yourself to make yourself understood. You know how flexible, if you know anything about history, you know how flexible, or even linguistics in general, how any word is just pure convention. No word means anything. We invented that to understand each other. So again, things change, language uh, changes, and there are surely ways and biases that bring uh, certain preferences to come about. The, the, the Byzantine one, of course, stemmed from... In the very origin, actually, was not even a derogatory term. On the contrary, there was some kind of sympathy, especially in the Protestant side, to the term Byzantine because it was opposed to the Roman papacy. Then, eventually, only in the Enlightenment kind of acquired this negative uh, meaning. 
and then lots of other things happen and so historiographical interpretation history evolved right but we maintain this term it's like what it happened a couple of years ago they wanted to change in in britain that institution about the anglo-saxon studies saying they shouldn't be called anglo-saxon it was a stupid news um of of course this obsession for it was not because you know you would think why would you change the anglo-saxon term because the poor youths are not mentioned no they wanted to say no there are other things there were other peoples which peoples maybe the celts in britain maybe some jewish um a tiny minority uh, no it was the the problem was about the fact that the concept of Ang anglo-saxon existed in a in a multicultural britain today that is the actual issue um and can it be an issue right i if that is an issue i will stick to anglo-saxon forever and i will sacrifice even the poor youths on the altar <laughs> of this kind of culture is language is power and it should be and there is nothing wrong to use it as such and that's why i will keep using the term byzantine as much as i often use in byzantine videos also the term Roman to stress to, to, to also to provide my own speech with that deg uh, with degree of semantic depth that is in variety that is important to stress certain aspects and others uh, you know, at the same time um, so the yeah again I'm fine with that but I also don't care so much because why why is it important I, I think it's beautiful that you have if if you see that there is if you know, if you learn that, let's say, a people calls another in another way because of their cultural perspective, it makes you understand so much more historically. That the Poles call the, the, or the Slav, the Western Slavs in general, the Niemcy, the, the, the Germans, mean, meaning the dumb, because they didn't speak their own language. I mean, isn't it fantastic? Right? If you learn that, you, you just learn a, a part of, you know, of, of Slavic mindset in relation to the Germans and all the multi millennial relations that they had in that regard between you know uh, good and bad things why canceling that term would you know how canceling that term would make any benefit how flattening the language how depriving civilization of its semantic power and wealth can help a person to be more largely brained Right, you want to make exercises to complicate it. It's not that we send children to school just to literally hope that they will learn everything about, um, you know, w w the the school programs. It's that you hope that they will become more intelligent by solving problems. You know, I personally, in my work, I've never had to 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 solve a, a to to um, a quadratic disequation, but as a historian, I'm, I'm very thankful I spent years doing that because it made me evidently more capable. And I know that, right? So equally, language should be, you know, overly complicated by useless things, which is usually done today by lack of logic and clarity and reason. But again, hierarchy of values is also substantiated by certain challenges and provocations that are necessary to keep civilization florid and rich and i'm not surprised at all that we get examples like this but not only you want to uh, flatten down a term by destroying basically the enormous variety of roman culture throughout the millennia but that when you change that it's even wrong because your culture ha that derives from it by the way hasn't even provided you anymore with the you know the minimal scientific standard to realize that at least the term that you're using uh, to nominalistically pretend that the previous one was wrong is actually wrong in an invention itself this is a very serious issue right through that you can not read the the collapse again of a civilization in my opinion then again when we will have found ways to to use the term Roman without any other you know adjective or, or 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 change whatever just call me i would like to see how like do you like roman art let's say which roman art yeah i don't know the one of uh, and you say the century well if, if you say byzantine is it better like and i don't know any anyone who likes in particular never heard anybody liking in particular i don't know seventh century art which is beautiful by the way 
because you know first of all it was very varied it was not just even part of a single dynasty as you know at the time why not calling it kind of Byzantine right if you look at the Ravenate mosaics for example how can't you call them Byzantine like in, in all I know that it's kind of repeating itself and making it in part it's the same it's I've learned in history but it's Byzantine culture and but I don't know to me the term Byzantine immediately suscitates that feeling purple and gold and those beautiful mosaics with those beautiful and that beautiful architecture uh, it doesn't um, awaken in me let's say the decadentistic um, evil whatever bias that we have for, for the Byzantines however However, should be noticed yet another thing, and this is I always advise everyone who learns histories that never think that those who came before us, even just a couple of centuries ago, were uh, less intelligent or capable than you. Right? Because if you had lived at the time of Gibbon, let's say, you would have not been more intelligent than Gibbon. And the fact that you are today still doesn't mean that you have earned anything of the knowledge even that Gibbon had to still force hands on certain concepts that actually when you read yes they're wrong in the way they're phrased in a sense they're incorrect let's put it in this way they are improbable whatever but it was still you know there's still much soundness to that if you read 19th century stereotypes okay some of it is bad you understand it's just unacceptable but still they say something part of that is, is correct and in fact we're still using it it's it's important to understand today that even when we know perfectly the Byzantines were Romans that the the reason why the term Byzantine was invented and you know transformed and being used etc over the centuries has a meaning in the for, for the world you live in because the people in the 17th the 18th and 19th century used it were actually doing it because of their historical and cultural reasons and not knowing those it's yet another bad sign of the fact that not only again you don't know essentially the history or the culture of the place where you were born in a in part but but also which you may not necessarily this may not necessarily be the case but that by dismissing without any further you know um delay without any scrapple whatever you're essentially canceling this yes because you're saying those people were stupid essentially they weren't stupid right they were working for making you have the historiography that today you can afford without any freaking effort just to not even read the first page uh, of a of a Byzantine history manual not knowing that East Roman never existed or that even if we use it conventionally today it, it's it didn't exist at the level of Byzantine as well and so it's not an alternative and that again in order to say what's Roman just to make us under ourselves understood you, you should add some specification so we have Byzantine it's very loaded in beautifully semantic uh, terms today Wh why not using it I uh, talk often with some of the greatest professors who study also Byzantine history frankly I know experts in the field these are revered professors and with them of course we always say Byzantine like it's not we would say okay at the time not remember always however these were Roman we don't give a shit because we know very well what that was so we don't need to play stupid games with each other to pretend we know something we just work with that right so this should be the standard and again, yet I have never met a single person in my life who thought that the Byzantines were called themselves Byzantines ever. Of all the worst things I've ever heard about history, which I hear all the time, unfortunately, I've never met a single person who was kind of, you know, endangering him or herself into thinking that the Byzantines were called Byzantines. It was, you know, Imperium Byzantinum or Basileia ton Byzantino or something like that. No one, because yet again, I guess that people who who approach Byzantine history are already kind of minimal intelligent to know but it's just a statistic hope not a certain that that it may be the case and in if that's if that's the level like there are many more problems than how they call the Byzantine Empire there to solve believe me um, and I'm sure there were some other convincing point that I wanted to make regarding 
uh, even again the necessity of changing the name again because because the deeper point that they make after all is, is this this one let's just say this comment was just you know it's just okay they actually called them so like we put this stigma on them right yes but the stigma is still useful today for understanding the reason why we put the stigma on them which is exactly what Byzantinistics has been writing in my opinion especially in, in the anglosphere also a disproportionate amount of information because this issue was mostly felt literally in british historiography when it emerged historically from think about about gibbon etc um we're also all fully aware that the byzantines were romans right it was at, this is very important it was not a single moment in history of historiography where anybody who used the term byzantine actually believed or said to anybody that those were called byzantines like everybody who wrote about that said wrote clearly that they were romans so again this this is just showing a depth of thought after all that problematizes history which should always be done because history is never settled right there are some historiographical topics that can be exhausted this surely is, is not the case but virtually meaning in practice the debate goes on and on and on and on in fact we're debating on it and i think it this is history this is the useful one not saying okay no we're romans point whoever says byzantine is, is an idiot we don't want to hear about that's the best way to kill a culture um and understanding its reasons by the way for example there was an idiot some time ago this was a guy who was obsessed with the normans because of racialistic issues he didn't really look like physically much so probably there were some issues there but you know um, he had those haircuts that people after having watched that despicable bullshit of vikings please give me the money i'll show you a, a show about the vikings that that is you know that makes you see the vikings for what they were not some bunch of bitches who act weird uh, and do stupid shit um and that had cut his hair because he thought he's a norman right and this guy was was obsessed you know i'm a conservative but this guy was obsessed because he was very disappointed of the fact that we call the sultanate of room the sultanate of room uh, which is the way it was called room in arabic and, and also in turkey for designating in fact the that seljuk um anatolian polity as you know that uh, having settled in the former territories of the roman empire in asia minor called itself like this is sul the sultanate of rome in their own language because it said this was rome right just saying also how much they care well this guy had problems because apparently you know that's giving a uh, a non-european name to the term for a leftistic agenda like I, as a conservative that made me laugh and i didn't answer even this was i think he was on a facebook group whatever just, he was very subtle because you know it needed to attract attention you know says what what would be the sultanate of rome question mark and said uh, i don't know i think i i simply i was too ashamed of answering uh, such a question i simply let, let him uh, a wikipedia link and he began to start the story ah oh, no the leftists you know the immigrants whatever they want to 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 harab his eyes over length um yeah okay um in that case for example I think you know if you say Sultanate of Rome don't, don't you sound that doesn't it sound kind of confusing in a way like you think well, wait a second so Rome had a Sultanate or uh, whatever you know if you say Sultanate of Rome I think it it, it it actually makes a very strong conservative point that is to say it shows you how other peoples who were allegedly conquering another land it could have given it its own name they took the name of rome they took the name of the of, of the single most important impacting uh, phenomenon in in the history of western civilization and probably of the the world of the entire um simply hands down because the, the roman empire represented the golden age it fulfilled all the indo-european um evangelical mission it was the you, you, there is no, nothing that there is a reason why they called themselves romans in that regard right the ottoman sultans would be roman emperors um so that's so 
trans-dimensional in a cultural way that you you demonstrate western superiority only for the same reason that you are mentioning other languages calling rome as as you know as their own thing and not creating something else right because they want you essentially so you may have many reasons and many views on how to use the term but in a way it's the depth of the concept that really makes some Thing powerful right it's not the nominalistic heresy and dogma again that has any value per se because otherwise you know, you know what will happen you will end up like the Byzantines they were the great Romans but that essentially succumbed to other peoples that they didn't give a sh uh, you know they didn't consider anything in comparison to them there's a beautiful letter. I made a video about the, the last Palaiologo in the Doomsday, etc. You know, and the word the Ottomans about to take over Constantinople, and there were the Romans, probably Rumelia, etc., that were already, you know, the were the Ottomans were essentially co uh, ruling over more Roman subjects than the Byzantines would do at that point. Also, with their support, because notoriously the Ottomans took over at the end of the day, also in 1453, because the Roman, the so-called Romans opened their, the gates of Rome to them. And there was an exchange, an embassy with a Russian prince that was asking what, what would happen after for the, you know after you know the, the Ottomans would take Constantinople. And the Patriarch of Constantinople answered something like, you know, well you don't have to worry because at that time the world will be over. And the Russian prince said, like like, yeah, I mean the world will be over, but let's like <laughs> meaning meaning at least not that he did say, but let's assume it won't be over what we have to do with the, uh, with the Orthodox Church later on. You know, and th this is the kind of mindset, right? It's almost an alienated one. And it's a bit the same one that, in fact, the, the Greeks had under Roman domination, thinking that they hadn't been conquered, that their Hellenic perfection had were still limiting in the cities, in the polis, etc. And you can't even explain, in fact, Roman history if you don't address... In that sense, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it bread loaf, you can call it flamingo. I call it Byzantine, all right? Because it renders the idea in a way, even though, I, again, I also find the etymology despicable. Byzantine has nothing to do with that, I agree. But again, as a convention, if I say to somebody, again, talking about Byzantine, ah, okay, like you, or you immediately know what you're addressing. Conventionally, that's fine. It's fine with me. Right, I have similar attitude to other things. I don't make it, again, a nominalistic heresy. Because for me, the most important thing is knowing history, is actual knowledge. Not tricks, shortcuts, to pretend you know anything when you don't even know anything, as a matter of fact. Right, and I can assure you also just by direct experience that there is that moment in your intellectual life. It's the first year of university, which you discover formally and finally because you've for the first time you actually read a book in some for some decent purpose that oh the Byzantines were Romans ah now I will tell the world war ah, you know that uh, you know it was like this all right if at the second year of university you still feel the need to say this it means there is something wrong usually the only people who stop to that are those ones that eventually bail out who don't go on who have issues who don't you don't see around in a few years and when you know about them, eventually you know that they are not even working with history, right? I've gone a bit ahead. I've kept getting interested in Byzantine history. I'm not an expert in Byzantine history, but I do talk about it in some terms, for which I'm also called to, you know, evaluate somebody's knowledge by some standards. And I can tell you that, yes, good for you. You know that the, the Byzantines were Romans. And then, what do you want to talk about? About Rome, which Rome how? Well, I don't know. I've, I've been talking about Byzantine history here, so if somebody wants to comment on that, maybe it would be more interesting than having to answer this stuff. But it's always funny, and as you understand, <laughs> I also take an, uh, a great amount of time in order to answer these these things that, again, do, do not happen often. But again, they strike me because they are the only thing that everybody ever complains historically about on my videos. 
well, it should stop. Criticize me ferociously about the entire things I say, but not about bullshit. Especially when it's not even, when it's even wrong, but even the attempt to correct me is wrong, worse than the, the one. That, that's the worst thing you can do. No East Romans, unless you accept equally the term Byzantine, because they are the same level of historical fiction, right? And, all right, so this is just to inject a little bit more of uh, hatred and, you know, and um, and drama and polemical content, um, but, you know, that also makes views and, uh, and expands the channel. For now, however, stop it here. I just hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it. Otherwise, leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.